Is it wild to see how worldwide of a song that's become? I mean, that's become the anthem of not only the University of Tennessee, but also the state, but also for anyone that's from Tennessee that lives elsewhere in the world. I know that's it's just it, uh, I've never uh, of all the songs that, that I have sung in the uh, close to sixty years now that I've been in this business, uh, I've never had a song. That, I've never had a song to. to uh, uh, hit me like that one did, or something. I I don't really don't know how to explain that, but it, it's just been so special. I guess because the fans out there, the people, uh, just took a liking to Rocky Top. And you know, I, I'm trying to find somebody, uh, like my doctor's office, uh, dentist's office, uh, nurses in the hospital. When I spent some time in a, in the Baptist Hospital here twice with the. Uh, Oak Park surgery, you know, and people, nurses of all kinds. I tried to find somebody that had never heard Rocky Top. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and and you can't find anybody. And and I get to think of it. The, the opera house down there it holds five thousand people, and I get to thinking. Uh, and any time, well, since Sonny and me now, when we were together, we, we didn't sing Rocky Top every time we went to the Opry. But when he quit uh, uh, 12, 12 years ago, when he quit, I just thought, I went down there one night and and people just tore the roof off. And I thought, I said, boy, I'm going to do this every time I come down here. You know, because, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have never been on that stage in the 12 years that the uh, sun has been gone that I haven't sung Rocky Top. Well, it's just, a, it's just amazing. Uh, um, and it's the same applause every time. It just, and people, you know, at the football game over here, uh, Rocky Top, you know, you see, <laughs> it's Rocky Top, and you hear, you hear, especially the men out there, you hear way up in that. In it the shakes the building. Yes, yeah, I'll say, Rocky Top, and they'll, hmm, Rocky Top, they call that song out. Well, okay. uh, at, you're uh, 85 years old this year. Um, what is your thought process these days? Do you see a rebirth in, in how you see things or do you, what, what do you see these days? And, and when you look out into the world and, and your career and. Gosh, it's amazing what I do see. I mean, what I think about, I, uh, I see, I see a lot of people that's 20 in their twenties that, uh, it makes me think about how, the foolish things I did when I was 20 years old, 22, 23. Yeah. I did, I did, uh, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I was uh, 22 years old. And uh, uh, I see, because uh, I learned a lot in the Marine Corps how to how to survive if I ever got uh, in trouble and, like, uh, fix me something to eat. You know, my dad, he, he, he couldn't fix himself anything to eat. He didn't know how to cook or nothing, you know, yeah. of course. In in the uh, in the Marines, I they they teach you everything that you need that you can survive uh, right by yourself anywhere. So I learned I learned it, but when I got out out of the Marine Corps, I could I could I don't know. I just went back to when I could go, and, and I got up around oh around forty years old, and I started being able to look back at twenty 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 five years. And see how I uh, put myself back when I was 22 and 23, you know, uh, the foolish things that I thought I was right in doing. And, I, and later on, I found out I was wrong, you know. And I see things, it's, I see people, and I, I've, it's, I think I've lived through maybe three generations of people, three or four generations of people. And you, you can see, uh, I can just look back and see how uh, how foolish that uh, that maybe I was when I was that age, you know. But that wisdom comes uh, with age, right? Well, uh, it's I, I I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I I just I don't know. Uh, I think of myself, you know, and I think of people like Bill Monroe and uh, uh, people that's lived. Uh, of course, Bill died at 80, 80, 84, I think. I believe he died at 84. 
And I think about Earl Scruggs, he died. He he was around until 88. So they probably, I'm probably seeing about the same things that they did at 88, at me at 85, you know. So, but I, you know, uh, a lot of people I see that's 85, they don't get around too good and they don't, uh, uh, they can't do what they used to do. And me, I've, I've got 76 acres here out where I live and I mow all these fields myself and, uh, I got a big yard. My, my home sets right out in the open and, uh, I keep all the grass cut around it, you know, a good ways. And so I, I do any work I have to do around here. I don't, you know, I'm not a carpenter or anything like that, you know, but, uh, just regular stuff around the house here. Why I don't, I don't, uh, I get right out there and do it. I've, I've, and of course, I got a I got a treadmill a walker. I got a walker at my house, and yeah. I used to walk down the road all the time and and jog and all that right there. But um, when I moved on to this road I live on, uh, I was the ninth house. You could you could walk down the road and not be bothered with anything. But right now you get out and start walking down that road, you got to you got to whip around half a dozen dogs just trying to eat you. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I bought I bought me a. I bought me a, a, a walker and, and I, I exercise here at the house. I, I, I jog on it and walk and I do uh, sit-ups and push-ups and leg raises and all that stuff right there. So I think that's one reason I'm able to get out and do what what I want to. Where Bill Monroe, when he was like 70, I noticed with him about uh, 72 or 3 in there, he, he didn't get around as, like he did, you know, yeah. and used to. So I think it, uh, I, I, I learned that the Marine Corps taught me a lot of things as far as exercising and keep your, keeping your body in, in good shape, you know. So I, I figured that out uh, yeah. a long time ago that, well, uh, that that would help. So that's, I've done that. I think that would keep me in shape and keep me going. Now, and I will say my voice is, uh, a lot of people lose their voice when they get old, too. They don't lose it, but it, it, they don't, they're not on key with it. And, yeah. And uh, it's not something, but and, uh, now this last CD that I, just came out, so I, uh, my voice was just as clear as it was when I was a lot younger than I am now, you know, and a lot of people can't, they can't understand that now. I'm still singing as good as I am, and so, I, I, you know, my, it's, I don't, it's just not, it's, it's not as good as it was uh, 20 years ago, you know, but yeah. I mean, uh, it's it. My voice is still in pretty good shape. So what is it? I think, uh, as you're uh, saying, it's, sorry. It's, thing, it's uh, I think it's all in taking care of yourself. I, uh, mostly is what, what uh, I've often thought. If people uh, and myself included, I thought if if I've, if I was taking care, started taking care of myself when I was 20 years old, uh, like I do now, uh, people. I, I think people could live. Very, very, uh, well over a hundred years old. Agreed. Probably, probably. Agreed. What, what, what is it about um, bluegrass that sets it apart from other genres? Uh, well, uh, with country music, you know, you can have. Uh, you don't have to be a good polished musician to, if you can sing, and hold a microphone in your hand. Nowadays, uh, uh, even like. People like Bill Monroe, uh, Bill Anderson, and uh, uh, Loretta Lynn, and most of the people there, they used to play the guitar all the time when they was introduced on the stage, you know. But now they just hold the mic and sing, you know. So I I noticed that about, uh, about people that, and well, in country music, you can you don't have to be good, a good instrumentalist to, uh, to survive. If you can sing, uh, you you'll be okay, you know. In country music, I'm speaking of. But now with bluegrass, if you can't do both, if you can't play good and, and sing sing too, uh, uh, you're not going. Uh, you, you, you're you just you got to learn how to do both. Uh, <laughs> well, I remember you 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 had told me um, I interviewed you real quickly about Raymond Fairchild uh, at Bean Blossom when he got inducted a couple years ago. And, uh-huh. and I remember you had said, if you can't play, get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, and, and uh, uh, very seldom, I've noticed this, very seldom you see a good 
a good player and a good singer, you know. Most of the time you're, you're better at one than you are the other. And uh, very few people in country music uh, uh, reach that, that, that type of, uh, I don't know, a goal in their life. Maybe I don't know if that's the word or not, but uh, Hank Thompson now. You know, when you see Hank Thompson in person, you wouldn't think the guy could play. He could play rhythm on his guitar. But, you know, Merle Travis could sing and play both. He could do both of them real yeah. good. And so, but Hank Thompson, you wouldn't think that he would, that he that he could do that. But some of the tunes now, he had uh, Merle Travis uh, do some record with him. And, of course, Merle couldn't go on the road with, with Hank Thompson. He was busy himself, you know. So when um, the first time I ever seen Hank Thompson, it was in Detroit, Michigan, way back in the 50s. And... Uh, the breaks that, that Merle Travis t- took on the guitar, he turned around and played them himself. So I found out right there that he could do both, you know. Now, Ernest Hub, he, uh, of course, his singing, that got him. He didn't need to do anything else but that, you know, and people like that. But it's good if a country guy can sing and play. Now, you see more of them today than you did, you know, like Ricky, Ricky, uh, Ricky, uh, no, not Ricky Shelton, but... Uh, Ricky Skaggs? Uh Skaggs, yeah, Skaggs is a good one. He's a good singer and he's a good player. And of course, he's t- he started out with with country and uh, yeah. and uh, Brad Paisley is a, is a, is a pretty good uh, example. Now, Brad's a good he's a good player and, and a good singer too. So uh, the ones that's forces because it can they can uh, they can do that and and be comfortable comfortable at both of them. And with me, I just. Uh, uh, I learned how to play a guitar first. I, I, that was the first thing that I uh, started trying to learn how to play was the guitar. And of course, I, I followed Ernest Hub. He was the first guy I ever seen on the stage. And uh, I just uh, I, I learned to play the, the rhythm while you sing. And then I, I always loved that guitar playing behind him, the electric guitar. Yeah. So I learned how to play the guitar like that. But do you remember a guy by the name of? Uh, uh, Good guitar player, Hank Garland. You, you yeah. Him? Uh, I patterned my my guitar playing after him because uh, the type the type of playing is out there nowadays is it was was different from what Hank Garland played. He, uh, Hank Garland played a lot of a lot of the old fiddle tunes and uh, and single note stuff on the guitar. So I, I patterned my style of guitar picking after uh, Hank Garland quite a bit. So I I learned how to play a guitar and. Uh, and sing too. So uh, it's it's uh, it's very rare that you find a guy that can do yeah. both. A lot of people, if you look at a good singer, they put all their time into the singing, and they'll put the the, uh, the instrument they play. They'll they'll put it put it last. But sometimes there's just uh, uh, sometimes the, the talent to play one as well as to just hold it in your hands and sing. Yep. Sometimes it's all of it. It's a guy.